how to enter, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Brittany Neely. I am the Assistant Director for Graduate Programs and Off-Campus Internships in the Center. Um, one more time, just going to mention in that chat box, um, you will see an attendance form. If you will fill that out for us, um, that gets us your email address, and then we can follow up with you with this presentation um, after the um, presentation is over. And really quickly before I turn it over to Julie, I'm just gonna let everybody introduce themselves just so you guys know um, who all from the center is joining us today. So Deb, do you wanna start? Sure, good morning everybody. Uh, I'm Deb Herman, Director of Employer Relations and Recruiting, which encompasses all of the uh, job postings, off-campus internships, part-time and for full-time. Uh, we are also doing the virtual on-campus interviews, virtual information sessions and webinars, which I highly recommend that you participate in. And because these employers uh, we work with uh, are definitely wanting to engage with you. So that's what I basically do. Troy, you wanna introduce Great. yourself? Yeah. yeah, good morning everybody. My name's Troy Nunnemaker and uh, I serve as Chief Solutions Officer for the center. Specifically, I'm on the call today to talk um, about our roles with with internships so we have an off-campus internship program out of the center uh, that we can talk a little bit about later as well as our on-campus or the UPIC program for our undergraduate students. Alex? Um, I'm an assistant director of career development at the center so I just do a lot of counseling a lot of outreach things like that and I'm going to help moderate questions at the very end of this so if you see my face in, in a little bit that's why. And I will turn it over to Julie in just a second to introduce herself. But I did want to mention, if you guys have any questions um, during the presentation, you can either hold them till the end and we can an answer them. Or if you want to type them in the chat box during the presentation, we can try to get to them um, as well. So Julie, I'm going to throw it over to her. She'll present for about 15 minutes and then we'll leave uh, the rest of the time for you guys to ask us some questions. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, all. Uh, I'm Julie Biggers, and I'm the Director of Career Development uh, with the Career Center, and I work with a counseling component, uh, workshops, and the development process of students. Um, so it's a great opportunity to be with you today. Thank you um, for attending. I know there's a lot of things that are pulling for your attention, but I'm glad that you're here. Um, this workshop is put together by collaboratives, so most of the people that actually introduced themselves uh, had a part in putting this together, as well as some staff members at the Career Center. So we hope you enjoy uh, the different tips that we're gonna give you, and we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. Okay, all right, so we're going to look at uh, core competencies. So some of you have seen these before, so they may be familiar to you. Those of you that haven't seen these, these are very important. These are what employers are looking for, and we hope that you will look at your resume and critique it and make sure that it's evident from your resume that you have these skills. In addition, as you are getting ready to conduct interviews with employers, these are the questions that they're going to be asking behavioral based questions on. So be able to represent uh, yourself with stories based on these competencies. So that's a, a great takeaway. Everything that we do in the center is based on um, the competencies and there's lots of handouts that teach you uh, about how to represent yourself in, in these particular ways. Okay, I'm sorry, my, I'm not going forward. Uh, my computer is actually stuck. Um, okay, well, I don't know if, I think Brittany might be able to help me, thank you. All right, so uh, let's talk about uh, the current situation. So yes, there are jobs out there, uh, but it's a little different. The lay of the land is different. We're going through many challenges, I, I, challenges I know personally and professionally. Uh, we may not find or you may not find your ideal uh, position right now or your dream job. 
uh, but we want you to think about the skill set that you have and think about the transferable skills that you have and you can make a pivot into the job market that is actually trending. Um, so think about it that way. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the next slide to take a look at um, what actually is trending at this moment. So if you take a look at these industries, we're looking at service, uh, production, distribution, we're seeing an uptick in shipping and delivery companies. I know I have a FedEx or UPS truck down my street constantly. Uh, our teachers and colleges have gone to on learn, learn, on, online learning. So this is another area, of course, our pharmacies, grocery stores. Uh, how many of y'all have been working uh, through Zoom for your classes, uh, as well as meetings or WebEx, so people to help with these services, social media, IT, of course, the medical pharmaceutical area, the public sector. So the National Security Agency is, hir is hiring a lot of people at this moment and some of your government types of positions, child care as families work at home during this virtual time, and as well as it's tax season. So if you have a finance or accounting or math background, you may look at uh, tax uh, types of positions. All right, diving right into your job searching tip number one. So again, looking at the types of jobs that you are seeking. So look and see what jobs are out there that fit what you're looking for, as well as looking at your skill set to see it, how it can transfer into another type of position. Be flexible, keep those options open. One thing that you could think about doing is go into LinkedIn and search Clemson University alumni, plop in your major as a subject, and then you can look and see what different people are doing with their major and different jobs that they're holding. Um, you can also look at the job positions and see the transferable skills that you have, those that are available. I would keep a spreadsheet of what you're applying for, when you're applying for, who you applied with, and uh, maybe even think about a follow-up uh, email uh, as you're going through this process. Job searching tip number two, develop a stellar resume and cover letter. So it's really important that you do the very best job to write a resume and cover letter that it's sorry, specifically relating to the industry that you want to get into, specifically relating to that job description. So the skills that you have, what skills do you have that relate to that exact job description? Um, and the reason I say that is you can't do a resume or cover letter one size fits all. Um, most employers are using the ATS, the Applicant Tracking System. So they say that 75% of resumes don't get through the Applicant Tracking System. Um, you get a six second look through these systems so make sure that you're making it evident from your resume that you have the skills that are necessary for that position. So uh, take a look at that. Also have your professional documents critiqued. We do that in our center and you'll see a little bit more about that as we end the presentation because um, we are doing all of our services virtually. Job searching tip number three, build your social media presence. So if you don't have a LinkedIn account, you make sure that you put one together and make sure that if you have one that your profile is updated. Um, with that, you can also look at adding videos or samples of your work. Uh, that's nice for an employer to be able to see. If you are leveraging social media, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, you're tweeting, make sure that everything is cleaned up and professional. Um, employers are going to be looking for a way to get to know you because you're not having these one-on-one, face-to-face, in-person types of interviews. So they're trying to get a look at who you are. Follow companies that interest you. They like to know that if you're interested in that you are following them and follow them on all their social media platforms. Um, get to know them. 
I would also say take a look at the YouTubes that are out there. Companies uh, have some YouTubes and you can kind of get a better feel for the company culture and what they represent. If you are savvy, consider that uh, making a website or doing a blog, just to highlight the talents is that, that you do have. Um, that would be a really good thing. Number four, develop your virtual interviewing skills. So we know that during this time, um, everything is virtual. So companies will be conducting phone interviews. So the great thing about a phone interview uh, is that you can have the tips uh, that are the things that you want to highlight uh, right in front of you so you can look at your notes. So the bad thing on the other side is that as you're answering the questions, it's a little more difficult to figure out whether you're completely answering the questions for that given employer. Make sure that uh, you are in a space where um, you can be heard and there aren't any dogs barking in the background or any commotion. So you wanna make sure that that's a, a kind of a soundproof area. Uh, if you're looking at uh, virtual interviews through Zoom or Skype, it's a, it's a better way for you to connect with an employer. Uh, make sure that, you know, I know that y'all are doing FaceTime uh, on your phone. Uh, that's more of a casual situation. So when you're doing these virtual interviews, make sure that you don't slip back into more of a relaxed type of environment for yourself. Make sure that you're not sitting on your bed with your pillows in the background. Make sure you're against a wall that's blank. Uh, you don't want any noise. You wanna make sure you have good lighting and a good connection. Um, there's there's gonna be a lot of uh, different types of workshops that we're doing that can help you with this. And we also do virtual mock interviews. Our center does, and also the center uh, of the communications center does that as well. Number five, research those companies. So you can go to the website and find out plenty of information about a company. If you wanna do a deeper dive, you may not know this, but we do have uh, Cooper Library Resources. There's five different databases that do a deep dive into uh, a company. Bobby Hollingsworth is the career librarian, can help you navigate those. But just to give you an idea, Reference USA Business Database is my very favorite. So what this database does is it will help you look at the company, uh, the company news, their financials, their hiring trends, their stocks, and their competitors. Great resources. You can really do that deep dive. Go to the company virtual information sessions, ask questions. You'll see a slide later on of the companies that are reaching out to us to do those sessions. Great opportunity for networking and for them to get to know you. Again, view company YouTubes and conduct informational interviews with alums or, or friends or friends of friends that you know that are actually working for those particular companies or organization so you can find out kind of what they're looking for in their new hires. Six, use job search resources. Uh, one of your number one resources is Clemson Job Link, our online recruiting database. So I've been told uh, by Deb Herman that there are lots and lots of uh, job openings in there. So make sure that you utilize that as a resource. Those are companies that are looking for Clemson students. There are also remote opportunities in Clemson Job Link. So take a look at those. Uh, one thing that you might want to consider is a UPIC that uh, uh, Dr. Troy Nunnemaker, Nunnemaker can tell you about. Uh, the on-campus, they're called on-campus internships, but I think they're going to, of course, they're going to be virtual this summer. So that is the opportunity. There is a whole list of uh, websites that offer remote opportunities. We're going to go through those shortly. CareerShift is a web crawler that pulls everything down from the internet into one location from all different job boards. You can search by uh, the job topic or subject, job type, as well as location. Um, great resource. LinkedIn, of course, turn on the feature in your LinkedIn profile that says, I'm looking for a position. Also in the search bar, look for, use the keyword, I'm hiring or recruiter. 
then you'll be able to find out the different people that you can connect with that have opportunities. Also, there's a job section on there where you can search for jobs and you can also have jobs sent to you via email that match uh, what you're looking for. Going global is great if you're looking for opportunities that are abroad or if you're an international student looking for um, H1B, H1B visa sponsors. Uh, there is a section on going global that will have you look at the different companies that have applied for sponsors. Uh, Glassdoor, indeed, also great. And then a newer resource that I just found is these virtual events that are offered by different universities. If you qualify, you're actually able to get into these virtual career fairs. This is a partial list of company openings in Clemson Job Link. Uh, Alpha Sites, you will notice that they will be coming uh, to do an info session. You'll see that later on in the presentation. Bank of America, Lowe's, uh, Ernst & Young, NetApp, GE, uh, some schools, Cardinal Newman, Cardinal Newman School, ScanSource. So this is just a partial listing. So get in there and take a look and see what's available. So I'm having a little bit of computer problems here. My, my keys are stuck. All right, remote work resources. Uh, don't forget about Clemson Job Link, as I said. Um, you, will get a power, you will get this PowerPoint after the presentation. Here are some listings of websites and links for you to go to look for the resources that um, are here and listed. Number seven, widen that network. Don't be afraid of making conversa or having conversations with different people. Make sure you attend the, the company's virtual information sessions. Connect with alumni, you heard that before, um, through LinkedIn for informational interviews. That's just to find out about their job and maybe their company organization, kind of what they look for in new hires. Don't do an informational interview and ask for an internship or a full-time job. That is not what you're supposed to do. Um, you're supposed to be gaining connections and uh, also gaining information that uh, might lead you to that next opportunity. Connect with your faculty. Of course, you want to connect with the Career Center. All of our services are virtual. We are here to help you. If you don't have a mentor, go to TigerLink. Uh, there are mentors for different programs across campus. If you're going to, especially if you're going to uh, be in school for uh, more semesters here, maybe your sophomore, junior, or maybe it's your senior year. Also, you can do flash mentoring. You can connect with uh, professionals in an industry for a one or two time opportunity to ask for them. Uh, ask them exactly, you know, what should I be doing during these times? Or can you give me some type of advice on finding a job in a certain area? And again, attend those virtual job fairs. Employer information sessions. Here are two. Don't worry, I'm going to go a little bit quickly, but you can go to our events tab on our website to find them. Number eight, utilize, the res utilize these resources for hiring trends. So this is, uh, Kiplinger has a really great, great information about what's going on in the world. Uh, they have a super article. There are 31 companies listed in this article that, that's connected. And um, you can take a look at those. The Muse also has 71 uh, companies that are hiring. Some of them I've actually never heard of before, uh, but it's a great resource for you. The Business Insider also gives you the lay of the land as far as what's happening in business. Number nine. Now, while you're waiting, things may take a little bit longer. So while you're interviewing, while you're waiting on that uh, position or internship, volunteer or learn a new skill. I have a few resources for you here. Connect with a faculty member, 
check out Idealist for uh, taking in and working with nonprofit organizations. The Assist Helpful Engineering. This is a website where researchers around the world are getting together to volunteer to actually work on COVID-19. Look at CU trainings for faculty, staff, and students. Yes, there are free trainings and certifications that you can get through Clemson University. Skillshare is great. I think you get your first two months for free. You can go in Skillshare and make uh, it set up uh, a, a different area that you may not uh, have, you know, uh, skills in. For instance, if you are wanting, to, you're seeing that jobs are out there that are looking for um, some with a graphic design area and a certain uh, program, then you can go on and uh, pay for these. They're actually um, on reduced rates right now. Um, MOOCs are online uh, courses that are for free. Inside Sherpa is pretty darn cool. There are free trainings in here through different organizations like um, Ernst & Young, GE, and there are free trainings that you can actually interact with their company and learn some of uh, the practices that they are doing. Number 10, of course, utilize the Career Center's virtual services and we know this is a difficult time right now. Um, we want you to connect with our Healthy Services, Healthy, healthy Campus. Uh, there is also a resource called See You Stay Connected. It's a guide of all the different things uh, to keep you connected at Clemson University. Uh, one of the really cool things in there is uh, for relaxation, um, you, can, you can take a virtual uh, stroll in a museum and look at the art. You can watch uh, animals at a zoo live. Um, you can also connect to uh, lots of other resources that are actually uh, helpful. Even uh, something is as nice as being able to do free workouts at home. All right, so that, that was a little bit longer than I had anticipated. I'm having a few glitches with my computer. Sorry about that. Don't forget our virtual appointments Monday through Friday, and you can get to us via email. Our virtual services include resume critiques, uh, our interest inventories, some general counseling and virtual events. Here are some employer sessions, Enterprise, Sherwin-Williams, FAST. You can uh, sign up for the Zoom link. Our social media that Brittany works really hard on, connect with us that way. Uh, we've got a blog, we've got Twitter, we have um, anything that you can imagine. We're on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, uh, connect with us and uh, we will send you all kinds of updates and resources. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to Brittany and Alex for questions. All right, everybody. Um, so Brittany, just once again, put the attendance form. If you would please, if you haven't done so already, go in, fill out those quick four questions. We're gonna follow up with some good information after this as well. And if you guys have any questions, please go ahead and just type those into the chat box. You have lots of great people here to answer. It looks like we have one. All right, so what recommend, recommendations do you have for grad students who are ultimately looking for a job position in academia? Faculty teaching jobs don't typically seem to show up in a traditional career search engine. Troy or Deb, somebody wanna jump in? Um, I'll be glad to on that. Uh, actually, uh, since we monitor all the job postings that come in, uh, there is quite a few different uh, schools that are doing it. One is Uncommon Schools. We've had so many different ones that come in. We've also, uh, if you go into the Muse, you will find that too. There's a lot of different schools that are in there. Some of the other uh, websites that Julie had mentioned. Uh, but right now I'm seeing quite a difference. You know, there's, there are education in there. It might be that you want to go in a special area until something that actually um, pops up. Um, I don't know what area of education you're actually looking at, but that would be my first question or thought on that. I think also, um, if I could chime in, higheredjobs.com higher ed is a good resource for um, individuals looking for jobs in academia. Troy may also have some other resources. 
I'd recommend um, the higher ed dot jump. The higher ed jobs dot com is great for uh, folks that want to stay in in the field of higher education. Chronicle of Higher Ed also has a, a posting board, um, and a lot gets posted mm -hmm. there. And if you're in a what whatever your specific discipline is, there's usually a professional association uh, tied to that discipline. So, like for us in career services. We have NACE, National Association of Colleges and Employers, or SOACE, which is a Southern uh, Association of Colleges, uh, of Colleges and Employers. That would be ours as career counselors. There's a lot of jobs that populate there. But each discipline within higher ed, whatever your specialty is, is going to have um, some type of professional association. There's usually a job posting board associated with, with that association. Thanks, guys. Um, next question is, are companies still interviewing even if they're not planning to hire right now? I guess I can take that one. <laughs> Do you want to take that one? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, basically, uh, yes. Uh, right now, a lot of them are doing the virtual information sessions or webinars. We had one yesterday with a great company, and uh, there were students there that really wanted to go and look at the company. They had a great presentation. The resumes were already sent to specific managers to look at that. A lot of them want to just keep their uh, presence with you, but there, many of them are hoping to start planning on hiring later in the summer, maybe this fall. Uh, so, you know, the best thing to do is keep networking with them. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough because there are companies out there on the Muse, you know, we, we have, I know today I talked to Global Lending Services, um, Instacart, uh, Intuit, uh, Netlify, um, a lot of different companies there that are actually looking for people. Yeah, I'm going to kind of add to this. I, I recently set in on um, a webinar that talked about the the national trend right now that we're seeing. Well, I'm going to mention this specifically with the internship world, but I think a lot of times what we see happening in the internship world does translate over to, to the full-time hires. Mm -hmm. And according to the national stats that, that I recently heard, um, only about 15% of internships are actually being canceled right now. So we're seeing and hearing, oh, you know, these opportunities are going away left and right. And according to the, the national stat that was just released, it was only about 15%, which is still a lot, but it's um, not maybe as high as we had initially thought. Instead, what's occurring is we've got about 37 to 38% of our internships moving to a virtual or online setting. Um, and then another 37 to 38 percent that are that are in that undecided. We're not exactly sure what the next couple months might look like for us as as the company. It's what we're hearing from from those organizations. My suggestion, and it's it's very much in line with what we've already heard from Julie, uh, but it, it's you know to explore all your avenues, explore those options, but also um, maybe not be quite so focused on one niche type of position right now. You might need to just think a little bit broader uh, for the next couple of months on, on what those experiences uh, might look like and what can you do to build that resume, right? It's really ultimately your first job isn't necessarily going to be your last job. So just keep that in mind. I missed a question, so I'm going to jump back up to Parker before I get to the next two. Um, he's wondering if he's a graduating senior, is it possible for them, graduating seniors, to use career services after graduation? Julie, you want to field that one for us? Oh, of course. So absolutely. Um, please do. We um, will work with students up to a one year up to one year after you graduate. So um, you have a full range of our services and uh, we work in the summer. So, you know, some people don't think that we do, but absolutely. Um, after one year after graduation, you work with alumni career services that continues to work with you uh, through life. But absolutely, we're, we're looking forward to, to working with you. All on-campus internships going to be remote this summer. Troy? I think that was me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think the short answer to that question is probably, yeah. I think that we will see, I know that at least initially, so the first several weeks of the summer, they will absolutely be uh, remote. 
Um, at some point in time, the university will make a decision to start transitioning faculty and staff back onto campus. And then after that, students back onto campus. When that occurs, uh, you know, we have yet to, to see, right? But um, if you're applying to those UPIC opportunities, I think really the takeaway from this is, for the most part, they're gonna be online the entire summer. And even if we do transition uh, students back to campus at some point in time during the summer, our students, those UPIC interns, will have the option to continue to work in that remote setting. We wanna make sure that, that as students come back onto campus, they feel safe, um, they feel comfortable with the situation. So again, the short answer is yeah, yeah. Thanks, Troy. Um, when is the best time to start searching for jobs? Should it be half, half a year before graduating? And when is the peak time for companies to be looking for people? I'm gonna throw this one to Deb. <laughs> Okay, well, I can tell you what it used to be, the old normal, probably in December of 2019. Uh, I would say right now, since we're so fluid with everything, uh, not really understanding, companies don't know right now what their financial situation is, when they can get their products and services and things out, how the market's going to be. I would say start right now, if you haven't already. If you're graduating in May, August, or December, I would say you need to be doing that right now. Uh, start focusing on some of the industries that you might <clears throat> want to look at. It might be that you might go into a different industry or a position that you've never thought of, you know, before too. And you got to remember, even if you start at one level, like say, even if you start at the bottom doing something that you don't really want to do, they all have these different departments within uh, their company that you can go into. Let's say if you're accounting, you're IT, you're an engineer, you want to go do sales, you're marketing, uh, maybe, you know, you psych psychology major that, you know, you've got, you can go into HR. So you got to remember all those different things. So I would say start right now. Uh, you've got time. That's my thoughts. <laughs> all right. So we have a December civil engineering grad, um, had two companies where I had two interviews, but did not get a job offer. What activities can they be doing right now to increase my value to the company? Um, one thing they're doing is studying for the FE exam, and they'll take it as soon as testing centers open. I'm going to throw this to whoever wants to take it. I'll be glad to take it again. I don't want to hog everything, <laughs> but I was going to say what I would do suggest highly is you do something that's in that field. Uh, it might be, you know, there's all these older people right now, people that maybe can't get out. They don't want to with a COVID-19 virus, get outside, do different things. Maybe you start a lawn mowing business. Maybe you do something where you go and do some landscaping or uh, do anything where you're helping somebody build something or uh, finish doing something. Those are going to be great things that you can actually Actually put on the resume and uh, that's going to be a really good selling point I know a lot of the construction companies right now are kind of put on hold a little bit because of projects um, but you know I think that that would be something that you could try to figure out what area of civil engineering you want to go into and kind of focus a little bit more on that yeah and, and Julie had mentioned in the presentation about you know short part-time like gig work or contract work this is a really good time to do that also really good time to see as deb mentioned um, are there skills that you want to polish up on are there specific like online certifications that that maybe you can secure right now or or some of those those technology the software systems that um, you can get certified in and, and be able to talk to an employer about uh, in the interview setting all right, for sheer sake of time, I'm going to jump on to the last two. And then if anybody has questions after that, feel free to send them to us um, and we'll do our best to get those. We just want to make sure we're respecting everybody's time today. Um, so next question is going to be, you mentioned due to the unusual circumstances, we might need to be flexible and look for jobs that aren't our dream jobs, at least for right now. Do employers seem to be sensitive towards people who are applying to positions they plan to be temporary until the hiring freeze lifts? Julie's nodding her head, so I'm going to, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say everybody's nodding their head, but I, so feel free. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I'll chime in here that, um, yeah, em, employers are going to be sensitive to this. Uh, employers are also going to understand that for the next however many weeks, right? And this will be 
this will disrupt the economy for for a little while. Um, employers are going to understand that, and I've already had questions from students about the internship aspect of this. Right, I realize the question is really geared towards the full time employment, but um, internship and full time in, in the in the same category that. Um, on down the road, this will be a disruption, a blip for everybody. This affects all of us, right? On an individual level, on a professional level. And we'll all have to have a little bit better understanding and, and flexibility with how we, how we look at a resume and how we look at applicants. And I was gonna say, um, talking with employers too, you know, and just reading articles, that right now they understand this. I mean, everybody, we've never, I mean, I've, we've never experienced anything like this. So, you know, you got to look at different jobs around like Amazon's looking for a lot of delivery drivers, UPS, uh, you know, it, Kroger, we don't have a Kroger around here, but maybe you do it at your home, wherever you're from, uh, you know, Walmart's hiring big time, even in the warehouses, everything like that. So anything like that, you are going to have those skill sets that you can actually put back. So a lot of them are just looking at people right now temporarily until maybe some things get back a little bit more gradually, um, like the president and his team said last night, uh, state by state, depends on where you're living at right now. So, so look at those jobs, definitely go out and look at different things that you can do. And then also, like Troy said, maybe look at uh, some of the credentials that you can take online. I think it might even also be an interview question that you uh, down the line that you might encounter is, you know, what did you do during this period of time? And, and hopefully um, with the presentation, um, you've got some information about how to handle this, you know, places you might work, like Deb said, um, certifications that you might get. Um, so kind of what are you doing with this time to, um, try to hit this head on. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right. And our last question is going to be from a finance major who's on track to graduate at May of 2021. Um, internship this summer was canceled. Would it be detrimental to my job search in the fall to work a normal job instead of an internship this summer? Everybody's smiling. Troy's nodding now, so I'm going to let Troy go first. <laughs> No, I don't. Again, like I mentioned earlier, employers are going to see this as a disruption, right? They on down the road when we all look back and we see this blip on everybody's resume and it's going to be on everybody's, you know, mm -hmm. historical resume. No, if, if you have an opportunity to get some work experience that might not necessarily be directly related to your field, do so right now. Uh, I would like to add to that, if I could, I know that there are some nonprofits that um, potentially uh, before you graduate would be looking for you to help people with their finances. Um, know that uh, United Way does a tax program um, that they trained Clemson students for, um, that they have actually gone in and trained them to do taxes for people that, um, that are lower income. So that might also be a possibility for you to get some of that finance background by, you know, um, doing something along that line. All right. Well, that was great. Thanks so much for the questions, everybody, and for sticking around a couple extra minutes. Um, Brittany, do you have anything to wrap up before we let everybody go? Oh, just if you'll fill out the attendance if you haven't already um, so we can email you and then if you guys had any additional questions if you'll just reply to that email and we can get those questions answered for you and just make sure um, to check our events page because we have a couple um, more events next week and actually the event that we'll have on Tuesday of next week um, we're gonna have a giveaway so one person that attends the Tuesday workshop um, and fills out the attendance and stays for the whole time. Um, we'll put you your names into a drawing and one person will win a $25 gift card. So, all right, that's all we have. Thank you so much to Deb and Julie and Troy for being here to answer all these questions and for giving that presentation. Yeah, Thank you for it. so Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's yeah, fun. Thank you. All right, have a good day. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> yeah, good luck. See you online.